Hey, what is going on guys? Computer Surgeon here. And if you've ever had a laptop, you'll probably notice that when you get a laptop, the battery life is as suggested, maybe around six and a half to eight hours on a single charge. The more you use it, the more it continues to fall when it's not on charge. So right now my MacBook uh, Pro, the 2015 version, uh, when I got the MacBook, it was running around six, seven hours on a single charge. Now it's around three or four. Now this does happen with a lot of batteries. Pretty much every single battery has a lifespan uh, that it will go through. Lucky for us, Apple gives us kind of some tools that we can use to check out the different kinds of uh, ratings that our battery may have, such as the condition, how many battery cycles it's gone through, etc. So we're gonna be taking a look at that and a few different ways that we can improve our battery life as time goes on. Now one reason that battery life tends to kind of fall down is because one, it's being charged more, and two, as you use a laptop, chances are you're gonna be uh, using a bunch of different programs at once, maybe doing a bit of rendering, and a lot of different programs have the tendency to run in the background. Also, having different kinds of things plugged into the laptop can obviously affect the way that it's being ran, such as external drives, different peripherals, and things like that. So we're going to be taking a look at a couple different ways that we can help improve battery life on a Mac, and let's jump in at number five. So the first thing we want to do to kind of get an idea of where our battery stands is to check the current status of it. Now Apple gives us a really cool way to do that. We can go to About This Mac in the Apple menu, go to System Report, and over here on the hardware side we can click on Power. And it'll give us some general health information about our battery. Basically what we're looking at is the health information. You can check out the model information, uh, the charge information, and other things like that. But we want to focus on the condition of mine, which is normal, and the cycle count, which is 244, meaning that this battery has been charged or gone through a battery charge cycle 244 times. Now, Apple has a 1,000 cycle count warranty on this, so if you have any issues before 1,000 count, you can go ahead and contact them, and they should be able to help you out a little bit with your air, with your issue. So if your condition is anything other than normal, you should go ahead and probably contact Apple support and see about getting a new battery, or you can go ahead and order a spare battery on any website like iFixit, and I will actually be showing you guys how to replace a battery once you get it uh, from a different company or things like that. So I have a video coming out on a 2015 MacBook Pro um, and a 2013 MacBook Air on how to replace those batteries. It's pretty self-explanatory, but some people might be a little bit afraid, and batteries are pretty fragile. So if you puncture it, you know, it could explode, which we don't want that to happen, of course. So I'm going to be making a few videos on how to do that. So other than this, um, we can see that the condition is normal, so we shouldn't really be having any strange issues other than kind of fast drain at this point so one thing that I like to kind of use is the battery percentage up here if you don't know how to do this you can just click on the battery and click show percentage now if you're seeing a pretty drastic in or er, a decrease in your battery percentage life you can go ahead and under here where it says no apps using significant energy if you have an app that's running you know at a pretty high CPU rate uh, such as you know you're exporting a video or you're using Skype it will show up here and if you're not using it just go ahead and exit that out because then you will of course get some uh, longer battery life and of course things that are under here are using enough energy that uh, the Mac is gonna go ahead and tell you that hey if you're not using this I would recommend closing it out under here also you can see that we can open saver preferences. Now this is something that I highly recommend because you can really add some life to your battery if you know how to use these properly. So I'm going to restore this to defaults really quick just so I can, I'm sure a lot of you have never really messed with these preferences. So right away it's going to turn the display when it's on battery only off at around two minutes. Now of course this can get kind of annoying if you don't use it um, like maybe you're AFKing something uh, like I do a lot. So this for me I normally turn it up to about 10 to 15 minutes um, just because then it's not shutting off all the time and it gets kind of annoying. So putting hard disk to sleep when possible I highly recommend this because when it's not needed you don't really need to use it there's no really benefit of turning this one off I would also recommend to dim the display while on battery power because the brightness of your screen believe it or not highly affects the battery uh, drain rate that you are going to be experiencing so one thing that you can also do is enable power nap while on battery power this is something that I kind of do um, every now and then it's not really all the time as you can see while sleeping your Mac can periodically check for new email calendar and other cloud updates so I don't really use this often because I don't use mail or calendar or really iCloud in general but if you do this I would highly recommend turning this on there's no really reason not to have it on and it, that's basically it for the battery tab now when we go to power adapter it's pretty much the same thing but this is gonna enable the settings when your 
laptop is plugged in. So if you have prevent computer from sleeping automatically when the display is off, obviously I don't do that just because um, I like my display to be on all the time for whatever reason. And basically wake for Wi-Fi access, put hard disk to sleep impossible, enable, and enable power nap is all on. These are the defaults. I would kind of really just recommend to leave these alone. You don't really need to change these much, I don't. Uh, but if you're really kind of a more experienced Mac user, then you can go ahead and fiddle around with th these settings all you want. But if you're the average Joe, I would really just recommend restoring to default, enable power or disable power nap. The defaults that they give you are pretty spot on and give you some pretty good battery life. The only thing that I really uh, change here is the turn display off after 10 minutes or whatever. So that's basically it for the power saver. Now one thing that I would highly recommend is making sure that you are upgraded to the latest version of Mac OS at all times because quite frequently they do come up with updates that will help increase battery life and things like that, file storage and things like that. So if you open up your app store on your Mac and if you uh, see there might be an update for your operating system, I'm sure there is one for mine, yeah, uh, there's a Mac Sierra OS X update, I would really highly recommend that you make sure that this is up to date as possible because it will. Um, generally give you some pretty good power and um, storage benefits when you come here um, just like the iOS gives uh, really good storage when you are updating it uh, this will do pretty much the same thing so make sure that you are updated to the latest version at all times unless you are not upgraded for whatever reason like I said make sure that your screen is dimmed the screen and the uh, backlit keyboard can be pretty appealing I typically have my backlighting on my keyboard off unless you know I'm in a car doing something just because when it's daylight you don't really need it on and of course that will save you some battery as well as your screen. Um, I typically have mine at about 50% brightness. Another thing is background applications. So if you open up your applications tab there's two ways that we can check these out. Go ahead and open up your applications tab and go to utilities and then go to activity monitor and this will give us a sense of what is running at all times. So if I'm going to sort this by CPU just because typically the higher CPU percentage the more battery it's going to be using. Uh, so iTunes, I don't use iTunes um, so I'm just going to exit that out and I'm going to force quit that. If you don't know what it is I would recommend not um, just cleaning it out because that could lead to some issues like Windows Server, uh, CLR Recorder is Camtasia which I'm using to record this video right now, Activity Monitor is this window right here and just a few other things that I may not be using uh, you know like Clean My Mac menu I don't need that up because I don't need that running in the background. This is just a way to manage background tasks as you can see 62% is idle and the 16% of the user is pretty much all CLR recorder uh, which obviously I know it's running so I don't really need to worry about it. Another cool feature of Mac OS is that it kind of gives you something similar to the Windows Task Manager in which it lets you disable or cancel background tasks that are currently running. So if you're on your desktop and you hit Command Option Escape it's going to bring up a bunch of different applications that you are running at the moment. So QuickTime Player is not even open in my dock on my other screen so I'm just going to force quit that. Obviously it doesn't need to be up and running. Same with Preview, same with MAMP, and same with Adam. So I don't need these. So obviously if these applications aren't running, I'm going to see a bit of a difference in the battery life that I'm getting. Another thing I recommend is for you to turn off Bluetooth if you're not using it. Similar to an iPhone, Bluetooth sucks out a, battery ba a lot of battery life. If you turn it off, you are pretty sure to see some significant um, kind of gainage in your battery life. Um, especially if you have multiple devices connected like the only thing I have connected is my keyboard obviously since I have my laptop plugged in a lot it's not really gonna matter to me much um, but I would really recommend turning Bluetooth and Wi-Fi off if you are not using it I know a lot of people are using Wi-Fi now but maybe if you're in a car or on a train or a plane you know that doesn't have uh, Wi-Fi I would really recommend turning these two off because you can definitely uh, see a bit of a difference since these two are constantly scanning for different networks and Bluetooth devices especially in an area with a lot of people this is going to be picking up a ton of different uh, devices and that can definitely drain your battery significantly. Last but not least, I want to recommend that you clean your system and make sure that you use things like, you know, Clean My Mac, Malware Bytes, things like malware that can run in the background will significantly drain your battery and I would highly recommend that you go ahead and clean your Mac out as much as possible. For me, I have Clean My Mac 3. I made a video on this and I will link that in the description below, but this is a great program that you can use to make sure that you are clean up at all times it enables you to uninstall programs that you might not be using anymore and it just it's a really nice program that helps you clean up your P or your Mac which I would highly recommend but I'm not going to go and 
to that because I already made a video on it. So if you want to check out how to clean your Mac, that video is going to be in the description below. So that's pretty much it when it comes to different things that you can do to lower your battery um, drainage rate. Now, of course, there's going to be a ton of different smaller factors that contribute to the battery life that you're using. And some of those things can't really be prevented just because, you know, it's the way your laptop either runs and the way that you use different kinds of programs, etc. Myself, I do a lot of exporting videos and I do a lot of different kinds of background tests and things like that. So obviously, I can't really expect my battery personally to run more than maybe three or four hours on a single charge and plus pretty much everywhere I go I always have my laptop plugged in like right here or at work or things like that so guys if you did enjoy this video please give it a thumbs up give it a thumbs down if it didn't help you or it just sucked so I can help myself kind of better my videos in the future and if you guys want to see some more content make sure you, make sure you subscribe I have a lot more content coming up spring break is coming soon I plan on pumping out a lot of videos and I have a lot of cool new products that I want to show you guys so make sure you subscribe for that and if you have any video suggestions comment in the section below and I will see you guys in the next video peace out and thanks for watching